Hello, and welcome to the Moncast, where we compare Pokemon and Digimon. I'm Stevie, and as always, I'm joined by Quinn and May. Hi! Hi. They are both here. We are. Here and queer, like Team Rocket. Pretty much. I approve. The current score is 1 0 to Digimon Tamus, and this time we're discussing the second episodes A Ruin with a View and Digimon, Digimon Everywhere. We recommend watching the episodes before you listen any further, but you do you. And a big thank you to our fantastic patrons for supporting the show and getting the uncut version every week. So let's start off with a ruin with a view. I was really expecting this to be in a creepy castle or something. I expected, for some reason, Aerodactyl. I don't know why I actually like Aerodactyl. That's fair. And you were kind of on the money. We did get a weird fossil Pokemon thing. Yeah, it was a bit of a fossil episode. Which, can we relate it to Digimon Adventure Colon? How we had uh, Celamon in... um, that episode, like it was cut like two episodes ago. Yeah, they are both based off the Sealer Can. Sealer Can. <laughs> the Sealer Can Can. Red of the Cans is good, but I'm glad that it was like a 30 second thing, and not the focus of the whole episode. I expected to like uh, have an have a, a legendary Pokemon in episode two because I just expect that from Pokemon now to just drop their legendaries as soon as they possibly can, as soon as they possibly Sealer Can. Boo. It's all in, in the tradition of the first episode going, hi, here's Hoenn. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah. Like, oh, this is a legendary that you won't see until next region. I think Johto had Suicune really early on. So maybe we'll get a legendary soon. That'd be cool. I mean, it's usually just a glimpse and nothing really comes of it, but it would still be neat. That, and I, I forgot that there was going to be uh, May's little brother soon. <gasps> they foreshadow it. Is, is his name Max? Yeah, he's called Max. Wow, that's some unimaginative parenting. Yeah, me and Max, and their ex and... Ugh. Though, to be fair, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but, but all of my possible names that I would have been called, is that they're, all of them were Pokemon names. I was going to be called Ruby, Um, I was going to be called James, I was going to be called May, which obviously they went with that one, or I was going to be called Max. Wow. So all of those like are Pokemon characters. You were born to be a winner. Yeah, I was born to be the best. Do you want to be a hero? But being a hero would be pretty cool, yeah. I've got to say, the new theme song just, it doesn't stick in my head at all. No, it's terrible. I think I'm surprised every time it comes on. Like, I think I liked it more this week than last week, but I still, like, I felt like this week was the first time I've ever heard it, even though obviously it wasn't. Uh, yeah, I was a little surprised by that too, because I went, huh, I don't remember this song at all from last week. It's definitely there. It's just really forgettable. Yeah, it is, it is forgettable, but it's not bad. At least it's, um... It's fine. This week I laughed a lot at the ridiculously over-auto-tuned Wanna be a hero. Yeah, I heard that too, and I didn't pick it up last time, but I definitely picked it up this time, and I was like, oh no, that's very, um... I guess that's the era that it was, where they where people just discovered auto-tune. I think the straight up confirms though that the map and the intro screen means nothing, because there was just red dots everywhere. You expect it to be thoughtful? I-, I was hoping it'd be like, they'd have a dot and it's like, this is the progress they've made through the region, but instead of just like, no, nah, let's just put dots everywhere. It's pointless now. It should have been an updating thing, because that would have been cool to track their progress, but then again, sometimes they just don't progress for like 20 episodes. That's also true. Like, I don't think they're going to be able to get to the gym for a couple of episodes, because they say that they're on the way, but weren't they on the way to Viridian City for, like, 40 episodes in, like, the first season, I think? I know, it's only, like, 20-something. I know, that's all I remember as a kid, is that all the episodes they said, and now we're on the way to Viridian City, I'm like, okay. You still get eight, ten episode stretches where that happens. You're looking at, like, a full arc of Digimon's worth. If I remember right, that one was bad enough they eventually wrote a song called I'm on the Road to Viridian City. I remember that. I think it was on, like, the uh, To Be a Master um, soundtrack. Yeah, it was, like, Karaoke Man or something. I think there were, like, two different types of kids. There were the kids who had the Digimon soundtrack, and there were the kids who had the To Be a Master soundtrack. So there were the cool kids and the Pokemon kids. I mean, that's not different. Sounds hey, normal. both are cool. Well... Jay had the To Be A Master soundtrack, if that explains anything. Oh. Maybe I'll listen to it. 
We need to do a special about this, I think, actually. The Pokemon and Digimon soundtracks. Well, Digimon's clearly the best because it has actual music in it. Like, it has um, Scarpunk and it has uh, basically my taste of music was either Blink-182 or the entirety of the Digimon movie soundtrack. If people want a track-by-track track comparison of the two soundtracks, you have to support us on Patreon <laughs> to get us to that first milestone where we do specials. That's fair. That's the deal. Well, anyway, now that we've accidentally previewed a thing that might happen someday... Hopefully. I, I want to talk about that. That would be a lot of fun. We start off, and it's good because Ash is teaching May how to do Pokemon things, and this shows that he can learn. Yeah, but the terrible part is that May has all of a sudden dropped the fact that she hates Pokemon. Yeah, that did make me sad. Yeah, now she just doesn't know anything, which is... Eh. But she seems somewhat, at least, a little bit knowledgeable last time, but this time she's gone from, I hate Pokemon, but I know things about them, to, I'm someone who knows nothing about Pokemon, but also I don't really... I don't hate Pokemon. Which is weird, like, I don't know, I didn't expect them to keep up that. Well, and originally I think it's more important that it's not she hates Pokemon, she's just completely indifferent to the idea of wandering around the world for, I don't know, ten years. But she likes adventuring, she did say that, like, she was in it for adventuring, but this episode she did not address that she liked, she seemed like she was complaining that they were adventuring. Pokemon, not good at things. She said, oh, I, I don't really care about Pokemon, I'm more into, um traveling the world and now she's got traveling the world and she does not seem to like it we're gonna apparently really keep up the tradition and still talk about a bike for 100 episodes only two episodes i think it's been two episodes give him a chance right right i'm talking about misty's bike yeah i think they're going to just forget about it fairly soon i I just get that impression because that's pokemon it'll just be a callback thing every once in a while i hope ash never did pay for another bike what a cheapskate she didn't have insurance who has insurance on a bike? I think technically I do. I've got home and contents insurance, and I'm pretty sure that includes my bike. Huh. Get wrecked, Quinn. Fair enough. I I have been wrecked. Anyway, I really liked the intro. The intro was fine. Ash did the whole Professor Oak point while he explains things. Yeah, he, he did look like he was imitating. Also, I feel like uh, next episode he's going to go back to not knowing anything about anything. I hope not. I mean, it was all very simple stuff that we know he knows, like, try using your Pokédex. He doesn't know about uh, type advantages any- like, but he mentioned it this episode, but he normally will put, like, a ground type, I will bring out my Pikachu. Well, no, no, what happened was, he saw Meryl and went, is this a grass type? Better use Torchic. Yeah, no, Ash really does not give good advice, like, hey, maybe don't fight three enemies of a type that have an advantage over you. Yeah, he is a bit slow. Yeah, he say, he does say that after. Yeah, which means he knew and just didn't care. He just let it happen. I mean, to be fair, though, May had no other Pokemon to send out regardless. Yeah, but Pikachu was right there. And Pikachu helped and didn't attack them directly because they were just acting in self-defense, which I thought was quite nice as a little touch. Yeah, it made them have like they have character rather than just be Pokemon. Also, I like that, that Pokemon now run on energy instead of, you know, needing to heal. When did that come up? Uh, that's... What he says about um, getting Torchic fixed is uh, instead of you know we, they'll they'll take care of him. It's no, we can get its energy back. Also, it could just be that Ash is wrong. That's also fair. Maybe Ash is not a medical anything. We're lucky that he learned Nurse Joy's name, and it's only because there are forty of her. Yeah, and Brock kept on hitting on them. You kind of have to learn the name like when you're apologizing to them every time you run into them on Brock's behalf. That's a fair point. Torchic is cute, by the way. Just throwing that out there. Yeah, Torchic is adorable. I love that it hurts itself in the fight because it doesn't know what it's doing. <laughs> yeah, like it got yeah. confused. It runs around like a headless chicken because it's a chick. Uh-huh. Mm. It's a good little little egg. Good egg. Good egg. What did come first, the Torchic or the egg? I don't know. That's got to be an, a Pokemon title. Like, Pokemon like their puns enough that I'm pretty sure that that would be a Pokemon title. It's got to be... It'll be like the Blaziken or the Egg. The Combuskin or the Egg. I can't believe they just went with, like, Ken twice. Just like, let's go do Combuskin and then Blaziken. Anyway, we should talk about this episode that's happening. Yeah. I guess we could. We're not doing so good at this. We're trying. Or at least I think I'm trying. There, there's an attempt. There is. Do you know who else makes an attempt? Team Rocket. Yeah, Team Rocket. How good was that segue? That was pretty good. I want to say, I... Last week, I asked, hey, so uh, when do we see Giovanni again? And then he showed up. Immediately. 
I was really happy to like get some contact with Giovanni for real and actually see a little bit about the inner workings of Team Rocket. It was so cool. And now he's just like, go, be free, build a new branch for me. Well, I like that he's explicitly expecting them to get killed by Team Aqua. Well, Team Aqua seemed like, sim- uh, like somewhat uh, competent. I know. That's so exciting. Competent villains in Pokemon. Give it three episodes. Please, l- let my hopes be up. I, I still have hopes for them. I can't remember how this this plays out, but I, I have hopes. And I swear it was Team Magma in this episode. They had the red lights. But they had... Didn't they have Houndoom? Yeah, and Houndoom. Maybe I am remembering what they said wrong. Like, they definitely said, like, to research Team Aqua. But maybe both teams are active. That would make a lot of sense. But... That was definitely Team Aqua in this episode. Because it was red, and there was Houndoom. Why would Team Aqua have Houndoom? I don't know. Unless they just mentioned both of them. I think they probably just wanted to mention both of them. That would make more sense. I think it was Team Magma for this one. If the wiki is correct. Okay. Well, then we can trust the All Holy Wiki. Apparently Team Aqua won't make an appearance for several episodes. Huh. So maybe they're the competent ones. Maybe they could both be competent. That would make for a really interesting like rivalry between them. And then there's Team Rocket. Yeah, but I don't think the writers can can make competent happen more than like twice a season. They just don't write competent people. See, I would I would like that. If Ash has a competent villain, he would have to be competent to you know deal with it. Like, so far, he's not been too bad. Considering he's got just Pikachu, he's doing pretty well. That he has just Pikachu is kind of my point. And it's also just episode two. Yeah, we haven't got a, a great data set. What we've got to go off of, my hopes are, are there. That's fair. That's about as far as I'm willing to go. Anyway, yeah. Sure was cool that a place called Old Dale had random ruins in it, because I don't think we got that far. Oh yeah. Well, we're not really doing like the full synopsis thing. It's just kind of like, mention what you want to talk about. If you want to bring up the ruins, you can. Getting my two formats mixed up now. Valid. They were kind of ruins, to be honest. I kind of wanted a mini arc fetching keys. That would have been cool. I expected that. Yeah, I was hoping for that just because having a story across multiple ep- episodes in Pokemon is so rare. <laughs> but I mean, it did also work in like, it made Team Magma seem really, really just like on the ball just because they had all the keys straight away. Good introduction to them. So it was like, oh snap, they got all the keys already. They really know what they're doing. And then Team Rocket's just the same Team Rocket. And I approve. They're very good. Same. They were very Team Rocket. I like that they did like half the motto the first time because it was Team Magma. Well, they do the full thing for Ash and Co. Ash is a valued, you know, a valued mark in a way that, you know, Team Magma are not. They have a relationship. Yeah. It's like, you know, Ash respects them enough just to let them get the motto out before he beats them every time. Uh, Yeah, and I appreciate that. It's like a symbiotic relationship. But yeah. It's a pretty simple episode all round. There was a filler guy who was a bit of a professor. I hated his hair. Yeah. Yeah, he seemed very generic. Uh, He just had, like, a tiny man ponytail. He was a boy. He was a man. He was a skater boy. He was a pokey boy. I thought he looked a lot, a bit like if Brock had, like, a child with Tracy in some way. To me, it looks like a cross between Jedi and Izzy. Oh, yeah, I guess with the clothes. Oh, God, yeah. You're not wrong. Random professor dude. Did he even get a tree name? It's like Professor Eldon or something. They pulled a random tree out of Wikipedia. Yeah, probably. But there are the ruins in that screenshot. They're right there. The ruins didn't even have that nice a view. No. I mean, they had a view of the poke- of the Pokemon Center. Uh, we did technically get ruins with a view. We even saw what the view was. I liked this episode a lot, even though there wasn't really that much special about it. I enjoyed it. It, it was it was okay. I would say that it's not filler, because we're introduced to Team Magma, and we get a little bit about Team Rocket. It, it's not filler. Also, we learn a little bit about, uh, or I guess we're, we're foreshadowing that May may know the gym leader of the next town. And May also has a brother. I'm sure that won't be important. Well, but we don't know that Max is her brother yet. It's just his in the intro. We don't even know who Max is yet. That's true. Well, we know his little brother. I don't know how I'm going to feel about Max. I don't remember much about him. I expect to dislike him. Oh. I kind of hope he's just like Izzy, because I would be very, very happy with that. That would be cute. As long as he's not just short Brock, I'm probably going to be okay with it. He has glasses. He's completely different to Brock as a character. I was thinking more as long as he didn't go around sexually harassing people. He's a child. Well, he's more of a child than Brock was. They're all kind of children, but yeah, no. Hopefully he will be better, because Brock suck. I'm happy with this as a second episode. I enjoyed it, and it was fun. It was fine. And Totrick is cute. Totrick is very cute. 
let's move on to the one that we're bound to talk about twice as long because we are inherently biased. Yeah. Not wrong. Let's talk about Digimon. Digimon everywhere. So, Gilmon is a good Doggomon. Oh, he's so good. I love him. So good, the best. He's such a good boy. He's so cute. I like how we left off on a cliffhanger of, oh my god, what if Takato gets killed? And then immediately we just go to good doggo mode. A bit of a change. Yeah, they just kind of forgot about that whole tone thing. (laughs) Sounds like Digimon. I think maybe my favorite part of the entire episode was uh, uh, Takato playing card games and they see that he's wearing goggles now and they're like, what's with the glasses, Yoli? And I'm like, that's not what those are. But it's such a weird thing because they, if they know Yoli, they know Daisuke. Yeah, they, they, they could have gone with Davis or Ty. But no, they went with the character without the goggles. Oh, I've just solved it. It's funnier because... Yoli's a girl in the show, and that makes it a, a better burn. That probably is why. Yeah. Being being girl is bad. Girls are bad. Being girl is demeaning and bad. I guess that's stupid. It's very stupid and flawed thinking. But Yoli should have been leader. Oh, Yoli or Hikari? Hikari would have been a pretty good leader. Yeah. Yeah, well, he, it should have been Hikari because she's Tai's sister. And she's Jesus. Yeah, and that would have made more sense. And, uh, I know a lot of people have said it should have been TK, but no, it should not have been TK. No. no. TK could have been leader, except that he doesn't lead anyway. Yeah, we did We did a whole year of it. Fair. I, I also liked the real hmm face from uh, Takato's dad when he sees the box that obviously contains a Gilman. Why were you so obsessed with that screenshot? I don't get it. It's just him. I like Takato's parents. They're just good parents. His expression was just really funny to me of him with his, you know, forefinger and thumb on his chin going, hmm, like, what could this be on what is apparently the eighth time he's brought a pet home? Both his mouth and eyebrows look like the Nike logo. So do his fingers. There are like five Nike <laughs> logos. Sponsor us Nike. But yeah, I like the facial animations. They're actually quite goofy and fun in places, especially on Takata. Yeah. Is it just me, or is the uh, animation better in Digimon than it is in Pokemon? Like, just the general quality. What year is Pokemon Advanced? First air date of Pokemon Advanced was November 2002. Digimon Tamers was April 2001. Okay, so very contemporary, and Digimon apparently just putting a lot more budget into their episodes. Yeah, because Tamers does look better. In terms of animation. And also the general proportions of the characters still don't make any sense in Pokemon. Thin, especially the girls, they'll have thin legs and like breasts at the age of 10 and a thin waist. And they just don't, and they, they don't look real, but at least the Digimon characters. Remember, the characters in Digimon are the same age as the characters in Pokemon. So Ruki, uh, Rika and, uh, Mei are the same, um, are the same age. But Rika actually looks like a girl her age. May for some reason, has overdeveloped. It's screwed up considering who their audience is. It's pretty over the top. Uh, Kuluman, into Vor, that's confirmed. Um, and, um, um, Digilaw, not Digivore. Tell me I'm wrong, you're gonna need to open your mouths wider if you're gonna swallow each other. Uh, there are two yeah. ways to take that, and both of them are pretty sexual. Yeah, I mean, we can agree that Kalamon's the best, because I love him. They're all the best. Kalamon is adorable. But I don't think Kalamon's into Val. I think Kalamon's just seen Digimon eat each other. Oh, that's fair. That is fair. You would see a lot of that. Because how did Digimon eat? With their mouths. The ones that don't have mouths? No idea. I think they all eat either fish or random fruits and vegetables. Or the banana that peels into nothingness. You know, except for Kuwagamon, who eats Piyomon. And then and Snymon. The idea of Digimon killing and eating each other is not something I really thought about much before. Yeah, me neither, honestly. Yeah, even in this season where people do pretty much eat each other with the data loading, we don't go full vor with it. They could have really scarred some children if they'd decided to. Why do we keep on talking about vor on podcasts together? Because I'm pretty sure it came up in the last Lost in Translation one episode where we were talking about like the how they were just eating each other. Well, I brought it up in part because of that, and then also because Kuluman suggested that they swallow each other. Digimon is a lot kinkier than it should be. That's... Very true. Like, I think I've spoken more about Vore talking about Digimon than I have in my entire life talking about anything. Yeah, but on the other hand, Takata's parents have single, like, bedspreads. 
They don't share the bed. No, it's like a, um, it's just, they're each other's beards. A little bit. I When he first started doing his, you know, with Takato being an only son thing, I thought he was proposing that they had another child. I think that was meant to be the implication. I couldn't tell, so he was basically just saying, hey honey, could we have sex tonight? And getting very much shot down. I'm with her. She it was a it was a very good decision, but But let him have the pet dinosaur. I mean obviously I would let my kid have a pet dinosaur. Dinosaur is not gonna shed fur everywhere. Yeah. And also dinosaur's so cute and well mannered. Yeah. And it can speak English. It's just genuinely impressive. I'm in a box. I'm in a box. Classic line. I in a box. Uh, I do I do love everything about Gilman. I forgot how vicious Terry Roman is in this first episode. He just wants to fight because he's like this thing of rage because he's a he's a terrier, but in a tiny little body. Yeah. She's like, Well you're just a failure of a tamer, aren't you? It's not my fault he sucks. Like, wow, you're a little something now, aren't you? <laughs> and he's like dancing around Henry, like, give me praise. I absolutely burned that kid, Henry. I did good. They have such a good dynamic. I love those two. I do like all, pretty much all the interactions between the Tamers and their actual Digimon. The Digimon have like quite different personalities. Yeah, it's definitely an improvement from previous seasons where like the Digimon weren't really their own personalities. Like they kind of were just extensions on the child. And I like that there's a smaller cast of humans so that they can do that. And even the few extras we do get are much later and barely count. It's good. Honestly, I think the only criticism I have of this whole episode is that they use, like, the dramatic, heroic theme music really early in the series. That was Oikawa's death music from Zero Two, and now it's just like, look at the boy and his doggo Digimon reunited. Also, the only way that we know Ruki's name is because Davis told us so. Really? Wow. Yep, they have not been introduced. We also don't know Henry's name, I don't think. Yeah, they've not said Henry's name yet either. Davis helps us. We know Kazu and Kenta's names. And we know Jerry. Also, why do the girls' like PE uniforms have such skimpy shorts? Because Japan, if they're bloomers. Because, you know, obviously we needed to create yet another fetish out of Japan. Yeah, I don't like that decision. Oh, me, me neither. It's the bad. But at least they're not made of triangles. Anyway, is there anything else to bring you up other than the fact that they call people Chumley? And I don't know why. Because I guess they were trying to make that happen, or maybe it was like a a saying for a hot second. I don't remember, because that was a long time ago. Yeah, I definitely don't remember that, but, you know, we were all children at the time, so. But it might have been like a saying for like the week that this came out, and people saying, well, I guess people say that now. Follow-up question, could we bring Chumley back? No. I might. It would take all of us, Quinn. No, no. Anything else about Tamers that we liked or disliked or want to talk about? Rika's voice actress was really bad this week. She she clearly has not figured out the character very well yet. It is a bit stiff. Yeah, stiff and even for uh, Rookie, just way too uh, overconfident. They're kind of going for this whole thing where she's like, oh, I'm a badass. I can already fight champions with my rookie level and win. Yeah, I remember when I was a kid really hating Rika because I never actually finished the series as a kid because it just sort of stopped airing in Australia. I think they'd lost the rights or something. But when I was a kid, I just really hated Rika because I never had I never had her like redemption arc, and she never improved. So I really, really, really hated her. They're also doing the only personality for a strong, independent woman, which is mean, mean, and better be physically strong, or else how will the males know that she's strong and independent? You can't tell I'm strong unless I kill all the Digimon I see. She's the only one in this entire series who you know sticks a Digimon full of rebar. Is that in the dub? Because I don't remember that. It was probably at least partially edited, but I, I seem to recall there being a fairly good fight scene where she's uh, trying to take on the, the spider right before Venomon evolves the first time. Yeah, I don't remember her stabbing it. I think she does try and hit it with a big rod. I remember it being a cool fight. We'll see. I may be wrong on specifics because it has been a long time. Yeah, I think so far, though, Kyle is definitely strongest. Henry's just kind of like, there? He's not really done much yet. And then Rika's a bit iffy. We got a lot of personality out of Terrier Mom. Which is great. With a really valuable introduction. <laughs> and he's so mean. He really was. Then Tomkato's heart breaks on screen. Jesus, you made the kid cry. <laughs> he's so savage. That's so mean. Oh, he's the best. <laughs> I kind of love him, but he's pretty terrible. So, was this episode filler or not filler? Not filler. 
Yeah, it's definitely not filler. We have met more Digimon, and we know a lot more about Gilmon now, and how he's a good doggo. Such a good doggo. But yeah, overall, I thought it was quite a fun episode to watch, and it definitely made me laugh in places. Yeah, that was fun. I enjoyed it. It's good. I love just every random antic that happens in the park. Those are just such good little interludes. That whole bit with Calamon was just kind of there to be funny, wasn't it? Oh yeah, remember that Calamon exists, and also... Just just this, and I think that couple will come back several times, because uh, we still need to have um, Impmon throw fireballs at them. I forgot that Impmon exists in this series. Yes. Impmon is so good. Uh, more to look forward to. My hopes are high for both of these series at the moment. Me too. Now it's time for Mono A Mono, where we attempt to compare these episodes by arguing over trivial things. So, have we got any general comparisons to make? The girl in Digimon, even though it's like she's mean and that's her personality, she at least is. She seems kind of smart. And then May is seemingly dumber each week. It's been two weeks. Yeah, I know, but like it, it, she's a lot dumber than she was la- like last week. She seemed like she could be a promising character, and she had personality. But this week, she seems like a different person. She did seem a bit more bland this week. Yeah, she just seems like, hey, I'm the girl. That's that's the character. I kind of have to say that she reminded me of Series One Mimi. At least dub Mimi. The first arc, basically, because Mimi did improve at least. Yeah, for sure. She picked up who and threw it. Why do you always come back to that as being, like, Mimi's most characterful? Because that was a serious moment for her character, yeah. Because at the start of the series, she was just like, oh, mud is gross, everything is gross, this is gross, this is gross, I don't want to do this. And then she basically comes to a point where she just, like, picks up who and throws it back at the bad guy. Like, that's, like, it's a bit of a, it's a difference. Isn't that in episode six? It happens the first time in episode six, and she runs away, and then during the Dark Masters, she throws it back. Yeah, because in the Dark Masters arc, she basically just reaches her breaking point, everyone's dying, and she's just kind of sick of running away, and she just wants to fight, and it's against a garbage mon in the puppet mon part. I remember. Yeah, so that was, like, actually a big deal when they came back to that. I don't think it's the most characterful moment. <laughs> no, but it's, a, it's just to sh- highlight the fact that she had a jumping character, like an improvement. I hope May doesn't start throwing poo back. I don't think she will. That doesn't seem like a Pokemon thing to do. It really doesn't, does it? Yeah, you gotta give that to Pokemon. A lot fewer poop jokes. I don't think Team Rocket's ever resorted to, to poop or fart jokes. Good for them. I'm trying to think if like there's any parallels between Ash and Pikachu and like TK and Gilman, but I think Ash and Pikachu have a much more stable relationship. You said, you said TK. TK. Wow. It happens, it happens. How would TK and Gilmon interact? I don't know. Like, I feel like he'd be significantly trying to curb the violence. I think old TK's too damaged. Yeah, there's that. Young TK, however, could get traumatized the first time Gilmon whips something's throat out or something. I want this as a fanfic. That'd be pretty cool, actually. I like that idea. Anyway, since we're talking about monsters anyway, who are we putting forward for Monster of the Week? Or Mon of the Week? You know, the thing... Terriermon, well, it's, a, it's an important distinction here, because Terriermon is the monster of the week, but it's the mon of the week. I like Kalimon, but I think Terriermon. Terriermon really stole the show. Terriermon had that fantastic moment, but then Gilmon has, like, the rest of the episode where he's just such a good doggo. God, I love the principle being <laughs> made out to be insane. That was good. I do think Gilmon deserves it more than Terriermon. Mm, I like Terriermon. Do you, do you both think Terriermon? <laughs> I do kind of think Terriermon. Gilmon was good, but we didn't get really... I mean, the only personality we got out of Terriermon was Good Doggo. He said, said Terriermon. Well, you did this. It's your fault. Yeah, Gilmon's only real personality the entire episode is Good Doggo. Kind of dumb. Whereas, I got a lot more out of Terriermon. I mean, I'm outvoted, so I will, I will give it to Terriermon. Yeah, we don't even get the, well, it's my show and I'm deciding. I've got to be willing to... To let you two win sometimes, because otherwise there's no point. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Terriamon has Mon of the Week, but who are we nominating for you, Mon of the Week? Takato is the safest bet. Takato's fine. I almost want to say Ash for at least, you know, trying to be a good teacher, but God, they're not even mentioning, by the way, that whole water type thing. She didn't even know her Pokemon's attacks yet, so she's getting there. This was Baby's first Pokemon battle. She doesn't even have a rival. What if Ash will be her rival and mentor all in one? That would be kind of neat, actually. No, I think May's going to overtake him in knowledge next episode. She'll start the episode and she's already smarter than him. 
Well, she read the Pokedex. It's an audiobook, obviously. That's fair. I mean, Takao had a lot of personality. Although, Takao's dad... Honorable mention, to be sure. He wasn't on screen enough to really get it. No. I, I, I actually liked Takato's mom, even though we're not supposed to. She's not the fun parent. But like, she's just being perfectly reasonable, so I was fine with that whole discussion. But yeah, um, I don't think anyone in Pokemon was really characterful enough to get Human of the Week. No. But Takato was good, and he was on screen pretty much all the time. I'm like, he's supposed to be the Goggle Boy, and he's broken down in tears already in the second episode. It's definitely a different protagonist. I actually really like that as opposed to the, I don't know, they're not quite into toxic masculinity with it, but Tai and Daisuke. Yeah, they were both just like, we are brave. That is our one trait. It is our defining characteristic. So yeah, we'll, we'll give it to, to Kato. He's currently on a two week streak as Yumon of the Week. That rhymes. We should wrap this up. So what are we giving to the Pokemon episode first? A room with a view. Four. You know what? Four. Wow. You both give it four. I give it a seven. I actually quite enjoyed this Pokemon episode. I mean, I enjoyed it, but it wasn't like it still had problems and I still was annoyed by things. That's fair. I think my hopes are just high. I'm easily impressed after so much disappointing Pokemon. So I'm hoping that this is good. I want more of this. I like Team Magma. But wouldn't you want to be better than this? This is good. It's not great, but I'll take good. I'll, I'll be the odd one out on Pokemon. Uh, but what are we giving to Digimon then? Seven? Yeah, mate. Seven or eight. Seven point five. We're not doing point fives. Yeah, I know. Uh, I'll go eight then. I'll I'll go seven. So I guess we average for seven point five between Quinn and myself. And I gave it an eight as well. I enjoyed Gilmon. I liked that we didn't need a lot of battle. Yeah, there wasn't really a whole lot of Digimon battling. There was just like the one bit of Renamon. And then it leaves on another cliffhanger where it's like, will Takato be killed? <laughs> will T- will Gilmon survive the next twenty minutes? Find out. That makes. This week's winner, with 23 points to 15, Digimon wins this week. And it's now 2-0 up after two weeks, so it's doing well. And Pokemon didn't get 666, so it's kind of better in that way. Next time, we'll be discussing the third episodes, There's No Place Like Hoenn, and To Fight or Not To Fight. If you want to talk about today's episodes, you can reach us on Twitter, via email, and in the Moncast Discord and you can support the show via Patreon to gain access to the Moncast Uncut. As always, a big thank you to our patrons for supporting our episodes, Chisai236 and Nicholas. Of course, a massive thank you to Quinn and May for joining me as well. Where can the people find you both? You can't. Yeah, Quinn vanished into the digi ether a few weeks ago. It's true, I did. But where can we find May then? If you search for Lost in Translation 1, you will find me in basically every place you look. And also, if you want my personal Twitter, it's Ancient Irismon. Yeah, all the links are in the show notes. Thank you so much for listening, and until next time, bye bye. Bye. We, we did, did it. it. Cord. Yep. And we'll do me, Quinn, May. One. Okay. Three. Wait, what? That's not what <laughs> uh, Yeah, that's that's the game. We all just say words. Okay. I need to I'm just probably should go to 69. Down. You're right. We should just jump to 69. That's a good one. We Let's should do, do 69. That. 69. Okay. Also 69. I'm, st- I'm going to start from 69, okay? You ready? 69. Nice. 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 You think people make more of a deal out of it when you look at Meowth in Pokemon? That's a fair point, and they kind of did the first, you know, couple episodes where Meowth was around, but yeah, people who have never met Meowth before don't even stop to ask. In one episode, there's a character and he's like, hey, um, I heard, r- heard rumors that like there's a talking Meowth, but that can't be right. That's great. That's good. I like that. Did we just start talking about Pokemon again? However, the person who knows like three things about Mortal Kombat here might be willing to bring back Chun-Li. Mmm. Wait, Chun Li was in Street Fighter, wasn't she? Damn it! I was so close to doing that so, joke right. So close. I do not actually know fighting games, but a friend to, of mine talks about them forever and just assumes I know who all the characters are. Of course you do. Everyone plays fighting games for the characters. I do. Not, not the fighting. <laughs> you know what? That might be the queerest sentence any of us has ever said. 
I'm trying to think if like there's any parallels between Ash and Pikachu and like TK and Gilman, but I think TK. Ash and Pikachu have a much more stable relationship. You mean Dakota? Um, yeah. Um, because TK and um Gilmon don't have any interaction. Uh, he and meant Takato, who also yeah. has a TK what did I say? in his name. You said, you said TK. TK. Wow. It happens. It happens. It does happen. That's it. I'm a, announcing my retirement. TK Gilmon I'm clearly no longer fit for would be a really interesting partnership. Mm. I'm so sad that I made that slip. So it, it's okay. It I, I called it Misty Mamie before. But you, you yeah, but at that's least fair. recognized it. My brain just carried on. Yeah, yeah I, I noticed because I just started saying TK. Potterman says thank you for listening to the Moncast. Bye bye.